Hey everyone, how's it going today? So today I'm going to be showing you how to create and populate a user's table with real data using Node.js. The first thing that we're going to want to do here is say npm i sqlite3 space axios. That's going to give us sqlite3 and axios for npm packages. Second thing that we're going to want to do here is create a new file. We're going to call that app.js. Then we're going to create another file. We're going to call that test.db. That will be our database. Now all of our code will run inside of app.js. The first thing that we're going to want to type here is const sqlite equals require sqlite3.verbose, which is a method. Next, we're going to say const axios equals require axios. We can also declare a variable up here using let. Let's call this SQL. All right, hopping right into things, first thing we should do is connect to the database. Const db equals new SQLite database. The first parameter we're going to pass in is going to be the directory path. For us, that's going to be period forward slash test.db. Next, we're going to be passing in SQLite period open read write. That's going to allow us to read and write to the database. Lastly, a callback function that takes in an error as the parameter. And we're just going to say that if there's an error, let's console log the error. All right, let's run it. Make sure it's working. Good, no errors. So far, so good. Next, we're going to create a table. So what we're going to say here is SQL equals create table users and then in parentheses we're going to pass all the columns that we want the first column is going to be called id and that is of course going to be of type integer and it's going to be a primary key for the second column we can say username then first name then last name email birthday and country Let's run it. Now if we run it again, we should get an error. And there we go. We got an error because the table already exists. That's exactly what we want. So we can comment out this create table statement and the db.run. Next up, we're going to be getting the data. What we can say here is async function get data. It's going to take in a URL. Here we're going to run a try catch. So if there's an error inside of the try catch, we're just going to want to console log that error. But let's say there's not an error inside of the try. What we're going to say here is const destructure data from await axios.get URL. Now when we call get data, we're going to pass in the URL. I'm going to just paste this. This link will be in the description, so you don't have to worry about digging around for it and trying to find it. You can just look in the description and you'll find it there. Let's make sure that we put a wait here and let's console log the data. Okay, after running it, you'll see we have all of this nice data. We get an ID, a username, password, first name, last name, email. We get all kinds of stuff. We even get a country in the address field and a date of birth. This is exactly what we want here. And we have 20 of them, so there's quite a few. Getting rid of this console log, what we're going to do now is we're going to say data for each. We're going to loop through them all as D. Then we're going to say let user data equal an object. We're going to paste all of these columns besides ID. So the first one is going to equal d.username, second one d.firstname, third one is going to be d.lastname, then we just have to do the same thing for email, same thing for birthday, for birthday that's going to be date underscore of underscore birth. And for country, it's special, so we have to go into address, put another period, and then go into country. Make sure that we have all of our colons here, since this is an object. 
and that looks good. All right, that should be all of the data that we need. Next thing we're gonna do is we're going to put it inside of a insert statement. So we're gonna say SQL equals insert into. We can copy users here with all of the columns. Paste that. And then we have to get rid of the ID integer primary key. And that looks good. So the next thing that this is going to need is some values. It's gonna need six values because we have six columns. Each one of these values for now is just gonna be a question mark. So six question marks. Then we can say db.run, pass the SQL, empty brackets, a callback function, which is going to take in an error. And it's gonna say if there's an error, console.error the error. Now here's where the bread and butter is. The important thing is that inside of these brackets we pass these variables and we pass them in the same order. We want them. So for the username we're going to pass in user data dot username and then user data dot first name and then user data dot last name and so on and so forth. We're going to do this for all of the following fields. Once that's done, I'm gonna add a little else statement here. And I'm gonna say else, you know, if there's not an error, let's just console log something. For me, I'm gonna console log success, just so that I know that it's all working well. And then I'm gonna run it. All right, we got a bunch of successes. Let's run it one more time. So we should have 40 entries. We won't know for sure yet, but we will know in a little bit. All right, next let's comment out get data and let's query the database. So let's make SQL equal to select all from users. Then we're gonna say DB all, pass in the SQL, empty brackets, and we're going to take in the error and we're also gonna take in rows in this callback. Here we can say if error return, make sure that return is there, console.error, error. And now we're assuming there's not an error because we made it this far. So we're gonna say rows dot for each as a row. And we're just gonna console log the row. Run it and let's see what we have here. We start with ID of 40, good. That means that our auto incrementing is working. And we've got a full database, look at this. We've got all the data starting with one going to 40. This is exactly what we were looking for. It's got username, first name, last name, email, birthday, country. Some of them might be missing a field or two because I know that it can be incomplete from the API but that's why we didn't make any of them important so they can just be null if they have to be. And this looks great. All right, that is how to create and insert data into a user's table. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, leave a thumbs up. And if you wanna see more content just like this, hit that subscribe button. I hope you have a great day. Take it easy.